So we've all been in this situation where we're trying to do a live stream and we just have really bad internet or unreliable or we don't have access to internet at all. We're trying to just scrounge around and just do what we can to come up with something to make it work. And there's a, there's a few things on the market to help this. There's bonding services, there's chunk style things, and there's a whole bunch of different things, but they all require more equipment. They all cost a lot of money. And quite frankly, it's just extra stuff that you need. Um, so when YOLO Live and the YOLO Box release their bonding and their Arden streaming protocol, that caught my attention because both of them are by themselves were actually quite interesting and quite useful. But together, I think we may actually have quite a cost-effective way of doing a live stream and just knowing that it's going to work. Because the, the biggest issue we have with live streaming is getting it from where you are on the ground, on a standard internet connection to the cloud. That's it's the, it's the first mile, that, that's the hardest part. And once you're in the cloud, you have a lot more options. Like there's, you've got a lot bigger backbone, there's a lot of things in the cloud that you can work with. But getting it from here to there, that's the difficult part. And this is where I think, look, I'll be honest, the, the Yellow Box Pro, it's a really cool piece of kit. There's a lot of cool things built into it. And I've been trying to figure out what is, what is the optimum thing for this? And I feel like this option really expands its its reach. And for me, it's probably what I'm actually going to be using it for the most is getting a live stream to the, to the cloud as reliably as possible. So let me break it down. So there's two parts to this and you can use each of them individually or you can use them both together. So what I'm trying to show is an example of how do we give it the best chance of getting to the cloud so that you can then restream it or move it to your platform of choice, YouTube, or example. All right, so let's talk about the bonding part. So the Yellow Box Pro has four ways of getting data into it, or sorry, data out of it. So you've got Ethernet built in, you've got Wi-Fi built in, you've got a SIM card slot for 4G, and you can also put a USB mode and plug into one of the USB ports as well. So what the bonding does is it can grab as many of those as you have available and sends data out those in the ways that it sees fit. So it looks for the best connection, sends the data through there, and on the other end in the cloud, it puts them all back together again, and then it's now in the cloud, and then you can send out to the, to the internet. So that is quite a good way of doing that because you've got the uh, multiple options, and if you've got multiple options with more bandwidth than you need, then essentially you have redundancy. So if one goes down, it'll go at the rest of them, or if you've got a whole bunch of bad connections, it'll just try and get the data up through all the connections available. But what's actually quite interesting as well is that this is not just for bonding multiple connections. This is actually can be helpful if you just got one connection, but you got a really bad connection. The reason being is that when you're trying to stream to say YouTube, for example, you just got to direct connect to their, to their server. They don't know what kind of connection you have, how it's going, it just goes, give me data and I will stream a few if you get it to me in time. Whereas on the bonding connection, you're talking between your server, which is your YOLO box and the server in the cloud. So together they can kind of go, hey, I didn't get that packet. Can you uh, resend that? So even with a bad connection, you can actually get better results for just one connection by using the bonding system. It's actually really cool. So Aaron Parecki has done a few videos recently showing this actually working. And he's set up a, a thing in his studio so that he can actually show uh, a bad connection, drop packets and all these kind of things. And it's really cool. So check, check out those videos. I'll put them up above so you can actually check it out yourself. But it really helps to show what this is actually doing. So I'm not gonna go that deep into the details here, but I just wanna show you how with these systems together, you can get a really, really reliable live stream. All right, so we've talked about the bonding side and we'll talk about how it goes, uses multiple connections to get to the web. Now, this is gonna be useful if you're trying to do straight from your yellow box straight to YouTube, for example. What if you're somewhere that is just a really, really bad connection? Like you may have dropouts for a minute at a time, for example. That's where the new ASP protocol comes in. So the way this works is very similar to Resi or Living as One um, and their encoders. So they have a really long buffer time and they send all the data up as chunks. So I have chunk number one, which is a little bit of video and then chunk number two, chunk number three. The way that it works is that all these chunks are essentially numbered. So the server is going, cool, I got number one, number two, number four. Oh wait, where's number three? Hey, can you send me back number three? Cause I didn't get it. So it just means that all the data has been sent up as these different chunks. And there's a two way communication to basically go, cool, I wanna make sure I get every single packet that you need to send me. Because when you're sending via RTMP, for example, 
it doesn't care. It doesn't know really. So it's just kind of sending the things up and things get lost. And it's like, oh, well, it's all good. But now this is only for things where latency is not an issue. Say you're uh, streaming a wedding, for example. If it's up two minutes late, who cares? You just want to make sure it gets up there so that grandma at home can watch and not complain. So in this system, we're using the YoloCast uh, platform. So they had their own, their own platform for live streaming, for doing live events and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. So they have different ways of getting into it, different ways of getting out to it. Um, but what we're going to show in this demonstration is we're going to use Bonded. We're going to bond the feeds together to get it up there as uh, best as possible. We're also going to use ASP to use this chunk system to get it to their servers. So we are going to be multiple doing multiple encodes. We're going to be encoding from the Yolo box to the cloud so that we get that first mile done, we get it uh, up there reliably. And then on their server, we're going to re-encode that to the platform of choice. And this can also be a use case for multiple platforms. So say you wanna to go to Vimeo, YouTube, Facebook, whatever you want, you can then re-encode in the cloud uh, in the different resolutions and frame rates, whatever you want up there, which is really cool. So it has multiple use cases. But again, this is more for a, I just need it to work. This is not going to be good for a live Q&A thing because it's going to take about two minutes to get to the end screen to where users are actually watching it. So it's about 90 seconds worth of buffer in the um, between the YoloCast and the cloud, but that's that's by design. It's just to have that buffer available so that if you physically unplug the connection for a minute and then plug it back in again, it'll just go, oh, cool, I need number three now, and then just start three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just do it faster than what well, as a as fast as you can on the available upload. So it's actually really cool. So let's jump in here and let's have a look at how easy this is to actually set up. So I've got the dashboard open here. This is where you can set up your live events. Um, you can embed things into your website and do all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things which are available, uh, but we can also set up our destinations. So this can link with uh, your platform of choice. So you've got YouTube, Twitch, uh, you can also do RTMP as well. So, but I've actually got my YouTube channel already linked up to the platform so that we can actually set up the event in this, or we can go into YouTube and set up as we normally would, and then just copy a RTMP link. So that is the options we have there. So I've got my YouTube channel there. It's been linked all as well. So let's go in here and set up a live event. Um, now there's going to be a few different options here. We can go through and make an RTMP. We can do uh, Yellowbox Pro. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the source type. So where is it coming from? So we're going to do Yellowbox Pro with ASP. It's still in beta, but from the testing I've done, it is pretty cool. So basically, what it's saying here is Arduino streaming protocol. It works with the Yellowbox Pro uh, only currently. I, it, I, maybe it might work with some of the um, the minis potentially in the future, but this is just for the Pro. Uh, and this has just been released in version five as well. So adding between 60 to 90 seconds of extra delay, this will help with the um, the choppy experience. Now the region list. So they have a bunch of servers around the world. So I think this closest for me is gonna be Singapore. Um, again, we're in the middle of nowhere, but that is just, is that it is. So ASP stream through bonding. Um, and this is creating the event in the YOLO platform. Um, and we can do, do thumbnails and all that kind of stuff. Now, while we're here, we can also already start sending it to uh, our platform. So I will select that, I'll make it an unlisted stream and we'll hit save. So now we have got from the Yellow Box Pro with ASP, we've set up an event in the cloud and now we're gonna already have a, the destination to be restreamed to um, my YouTube channel there. Uh, start date, I'll just set it as today's date. Doesn't really matter per se, I'm just gonna, okay, it can't be in the past, there you go. All right, so I don't really care about this site, I just wanna get it to YouTube, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Um, we can set up, I'll turn off auto start because that kind of scares me a little bit, um, but in theory it should be fine. All right, so we've got these to, this information in there now, we'll hit create. So now we've got it scheduled to start in two hours, but we really don't care about that. Now we will jump into the yellow box and we'll have a look at uh, how we find this event. So we can go into Yellowcast events and it'll have a little look and cool. We've got a scheduled stream sitting here, ready to go. So I got my camera feed going into here. Obviously you can see that as well. Um, and this is where we have all the options. So if we go down here, 
Uh, obviously, we have our thing. We can um, put in videos in here as well. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. Now, again, I'm not going to go into details about what Yellow, Yellow Box can do. There's a plenty of videos out there, but I just want to show how this works and how cool it is as well. So we've got this new tab down the bottom here called Network Bonding. So we're using the ASP protocol to get to the cloud, but we're also going to turn on Network Bonding as well. Um, now, this is a paid service. This is not free. They, I mean, servers and stuff cost a lot of money. But I have got... Um, on this device, I've got Ethernet and uh, Wi-Fi um, set up, and we can also run a speed test. Um, so we'll see how that looks. Now, my connection here is a uh, thousand down and 50 up, um, but since we're doing bonding, we're not gonna get anywhere near that, but then again, we don't need that much um, speed. So it looks like it gets around 40 to 50 or so. so I'll show you more info. We'll have a look at the upload speed. Um, again, my upload physically is um, around 50. And again, we're getting 49 there. So we're getting about 50 by 50. So that may be a limitation on the other box in terms of how much they're uh, allowing you, but that's all you need. Like you can't do any more than eight meg stream from this thing anyway. So um, there we go. So we got a 50 by 50 connection and we are running. So you can also see there how it was spreading the, the load between the ethernet and the Wi-Fi. So that's actually really cool to be able to actually see what's going on and it'll show you if there's any, if any problems, what's actually happening. So let's go through here and do a nice high quality stream because we have the, um, the bandwidth available. Uh, so go to encoding settings, we'll do a constant bit rate. Let's just, let's go, let's go to max. So we go eight megabit, uh, stream here at 1080 at 30 frames a second. All right, so now that we've got the yellow box set up, let's go back to the web page and go make sure we are all set up properly. So here we are in the, uh, the main platform window. So this is actually where we can go and schedule an event on YouTube. So before we had it just linked to YouTube, but we didn't actually make an event yet. So we can go in here and tell it to create an event. Um, and this is still linked to this particular stream here. So it's scheduled. So this is where we can see our video that they've made. It's called the same thing as our thing before. So we can go and do our usual stuff. Uh, it's already got the RTMP key all put in and that's all good to go. We can adjust our latency here as well. I mean, it's not really gonna help much because it already is 90 seconds just from the stream itself. So that's ready to go. So now let's bring up uh, both of our devices. We've got the yellow box sitting down below and we have the portal to my right. Let's hit go live. It's gonna complain that I'm starting early, but that's because I've got the timing set wrong. And let's see what happens. So uh, we've got this uploading now. You can see we've got the uh, bit rates. Okay, there's no sound, but again, this we're just showing a video coming through. I don't have sound on my camera at the moment but we can see that eight megabits is going through just the ethernet. So what I wanted to do actually was I took up the Wi-Fi um, just so I could show what happens when I pull the pin and if we end up losing any data. Uh, now on the computer here, you can see there's no source connected yet because we've got that 90 seconds of buffer we have to wait. So let's go in here and put a timer on there just so we can see um, how long this delay is looking at. So we'll wait a little bit for the stream to catch up and the buffer to come through and then we will start seeing our picture on the screen here. Now it looks like the way this is set up, it will automatically connect to YouTube once it goes live. Uh, potentially you can turn that off to be able to actually um, do that a bit later. So YouTube is still waiting for the software to start streaming. Um, so still waiting for that to come through, but again, this is, this is the entire reason we're doing this. Um, what I'm actually gonna do while we're waiting is at nine minutes, I have pulled the ethernet. So the ethernet is gone. Um, now obviously there's no upload happening and we can see that the ASP is starting to appear um, in the browser. So at nine minutes on the clock, I pull the pin and we will see if we lose any data. So eight minutes and 25 seconds, I'm plugging that back in. So once that connects to the network, gets an address, we should hopefully see that bandwidth start uh, bumping up again. So you can see it's actually going up at 46 megabits to try and catch up all the data that's been lost during that time. Um, but we're about to hit eight minutes on, oh, it's just on the yellow box itself. We've still got 42 seconds left in this browser to see if we lost any data there. But we are now connected to my YouTube channel as well. 
And if we go to YouTube, we should soon start to see, there we go, we're getting an excellent connection and it has started the stream. Um, so that's going all the way through. So now let's um, wait 30 seconds and see what happens when, well, to that data that's lost after we pull the, literally pull the pin. Now, another thing we look at, so down below, we can see that we're back at eight, me eight megabits again. So it's caught up with that buffer. It's gone and uploaded all that data that was lost while we unplugged the pin. But we are approaching uh, nine minutes now, which is when we physically uh, unplug the cable and we'll see if we lose anything at all. So there was a little glitch there, which is interesting, but at the same time, we are still counting down and you can physically see the ethernet port. Uh, I'm literally holding the ethernet cable. Um, and on YouTube, once it gets to, we can have a look at live. Uh, that's also live as well. We haven't lost any data. And this is actually, th there is no internet at this point while we're um, between nine minutes and, nine, and eight minutes and 30 seconds, which is really cool, which is really impressive. Um, but that's just showing the ASP protocol and how it works. So um, even with a complete loss of connection, it will just catch back up. And now we've got the internet back in and everything has gone straight through. So there you have it. We've literally gone a live stream. We've pulled the plug entirely and it's gone all the way through. Super impressive. Now, again, this is all in beta. So, but as you can see, the thing works. We've got connection going up, we pull the plug. And if we were to add um, multiple connections as well, we'll just have a lot more levels of redundancy for this stream. So let's compare this option with some of the other things we have on the market these days. And I can kind of pin it down to two main ones. And let me know in the comments if there's any others that you can think of as well. Again, I'm always looking for new, new things to try. Uh, so LiveView. LiveView is definitely a big one in this market. It's, it's something that you'll find in pretty much every TV station. You'll have ENG crews with the backpack in, their, in the back of their car. And they will send to a server in the um, master control room and it just works. It's got a couple of seconds of delay to add to um, account for that um, buffer, but it's, it's designed for live. It's designed for a lot of connections. So typically you will have between two to eight mobile connections just to get it into the cloud. Um, and that requires physical servers or winding up servers in, in Amazon, for example. Uh, now it's awesome but it's quite expensive and not particularly easy to use in terms of um, uh, for people who are doing small streams, for example. Uh, and you have the other side, which is also Resi or Liv Living as One, I think it used to be called. And so that's more for uh, a permanent install. So that's designed for uh, say a church that will stream every Sunday, for example, and they need to just get the stream to the web. They don't care about latency. That has the 90 second buffer similar to this. Um, but it's not designed to be portable at all. Uh, I have a client that I work with who has a resi box and they take it around with them to the places that they go to. They travel around doing different events. And look, it's it's not great. Um, like the box itself is fine, but there's no, there's no GUI on it. There's no monitoring. There's no way of knowing what you're actually plugging into the thing. There's no way of checking if the feed's actually working until you're actually live. And when they, when we contacted them to go say, Hey, how can we see what's happening? They're like, just plug a monitor in line. I'm like, that's another point of failure. So for permanent installs, it's great, but for portable, definitely not. So you kind of got these two different extremes here, which both are good for what they do, but it's not necessarily flexible in, in what they do, where I feel like Yellow Live have kind of found this really nice middle niche ground. They have a good bit of hardware, which has a nice screen on it. So you can actually see and hear what's going on. You can plug in headphones, make sure that what you're streaming is correct. Uh, you also have built in um, media players and switching. Like it's a full vision switcher as well, but you have the bonding built in with up to four connections. You have the ASP to be able to get it online. If you just don't care about latency, you just want to get it up there. And you can pick between the two. If you just want to have a low latency stream going to YouTube, for example, use the bonding. And even if you're not using multiple connections, you can just go, I just want one connection and then have that talking with the server to be able to make sure that it's getting to the cloud right. Again, that, that first mile to, to the cloud is always the hardest one. Um, and if you really want it to work, combine the two. You got bonding and you've got uh, the ASP. So I feel like this is a really nice little niche that they've found here. And it's something that like, to be honest, I was trying to figure out what this thing is for. It's got a lot of capabilities 
but I feel like now that it's, if you're looking for a portable way to stream, I feel like this is it. And if you just want it to work, it'll just work. And if you want to look at their platform for actually doing your live streams as well, it, yeah, look, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed, not gonna lie. And I think that, that does it for this video. So hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did and uh, let me know in the comments. Let me, I'd love to hear some horror stories of things that have happened for you and if it's something that you'd even be keen on trying because it, it's cool. It's, it's still in beta, but the fact that this is beta and it's just working, I'm pretty impressed. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.